Hi everyone, it's Bailey, aka That Blushing Whip Girl, and I'm back with another video. Today I'm coming to you with a review of my most recent read, which is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Murr. This book follows Gideon, who is an indentured servant on the planet of the Ninth. There are nine planets in total, and each planet kind of stands for a different thing. Gideon wants nothing more than to escape this planet that she's been trapped on since she was a baby and just go fight in the army. The problem is that her nemesis, Harrowhark, will do pretty much anything to make sure that she doesn't leave. Of course, that all changes when Harrowhark needs something. Harrowhark needs to go to the first planet and essentially complete her necromancy training. And to do that, all necromancers need a cavalier, which is essentially a badass sword fighter. She tells Gideon that if Gideon comes as her cavalier and they complete the training, then Gideon can have her freedom. So the rest of the story follows them on the first planet and all of the crazy things that happen there. This book is filled with skeletons, mystery, and sword fighting. So I'm going to keep this whole review spoiler free because I think I can do that and it makes it more accessible to everybody else. If you've read the book and you want to know my thoughts on some of the spoilers, I would be happy to talk to you about it. Um, just go ahead and send me a message. I gave this book 3.75 out of 5 stars. There were parts of it that I loved and parts of it that I just couldn't quite get behind, but overall it made for an enjoyable read. Gideon captured my heart. She's funny, she's filled with one-liner comebacks, and she just has such a distinct voice. She's not everyone's cup of tea. The way she's written is... I thought very real, but some people could find her annoying. If ever there was a character I just wanted to chill with, I would pick Gideon. There were a lot of other characters that had moments that I really liked, but Gideon was very clearly the star of the show. My problem started with the pacing of the book. The first 100 to 200 pages go by really slowly, and for a while there I was wondering, are we actually going somewhere? Is something actually going to happen in this? It wasn't enough to stop me from reading, but it just... it felt very long. <laughs> then we get to the middle and BAM! Stuff starts happening and suddenly we're in some sort of mystery thriller. At that point I turned up the speed on my audiobook so I could get to the answers quicker. I was consumed by the book. I wanted to keep reading and I was determined to finish it that night. But then we got to the very climactic ending and it was going way too fast. I turned my audiobook down to even slower than I had been reading it at the beginning and it just, the pages kept dwindling and dwindling and it was going like a crazy speed. So haha, joke's on me, my camera stopped recording. I get halfway through editing and then realize, oh, there's no more footage. Great. So where I left off, I was talking about the pacing of the book. It wasn't enough to make me hate the book or even dislike it, but it is something to think about before you go into it. There's two other things that take it down that quarter star. That is the romance. Now, I'm glad that the book didn't focus heavily on the romance aspect. That's not exactly what I look for in a book. However, the romance wasn't developed enough. Their, their relationship just was so underdeveloped in the romantic way. I think I could have liked them if there was just a little bit more, but as it is, I couldn't quite ship it. There's also one scene where we get a lot of information, a big heavy reveal, and it's just kind of glossed over. Um, we don't get anything leading up to it that really alludes to it, just like a few bits and pieces, but not something that should show the gravity of it. And then afterwards, it kind of seems like it didn't happen. Um, it's just not as strong of a moment as it's supposed to be. Like, it is in the moment, and then it just kind of... The moment was kind of, eh. One more thing to say about the book, and it's a positive. Tamsin knows how to world build. There is so much to this book, and I have a feeling that she knows way more about this world than she'll ever be able to tell us. Hell, there's even a glossary in the back of the book to look at while you're trying to figure out what some of these terms mean. There's the different types of necromancy, there's the planets, it's crazy. And then there's some sort of war going on, and 
I think in the second book we're gonna get a lot more on this but I just wanted more I wanted I was there I was on the planet I was in the necromancy I was transported and that's like a really huge thing for me characters and world building that's where it's at so I do I do recommend this book I think you should pick it up um, it was enjoyable and there's a lot of potential for that second book it's a sci-fi fantasy kind of a thriller ish mixed in there and it's just fascinating and as soon as I get paid I know I'm gonna run out and I'm gonna buy the next book and I know I said I'm not buying books that I haven't already read but I already own Gideon the Ninth and I would like the collection. So now I'm on to my next read, which is Malibu Rising, and it's kind of a stark contrast to Gideon the Ninth. Um, I'm 100 pages in and I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. it. It's not quite up to par with Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and uh, Daisy Jones and the Six. Uh, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I've also started a few other books. Uh, I have a few net galleys. I have all this manga, library books. I have The Devil in the White City. So we'll kind of see where I go from here. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, if you like this video, like and subscribe down below. I've linked my Instagram and my Twitter down below as well. And I hope to see you soon. My next video will be my Sci-Fi September TBR. And I'm really looking forward to that. Bye.